All right, today we're gonna to be learning how to install these Sluter shower pans. We're gonna be cutting it to fit. We're gonna be cutting the hole out inside here in the shower pan. And then we're gonna be installing the flange and installing the pan and waterproofing all that. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get that ring out. We're gonna start measuring where we need to cut our pipe. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this ring. This is our, our spacer. We're gonna put it underneath about where it's gonna go. And then we're gonna take a measurement. And we're gonna measure from this ridge, one of these highest ridges, to the bottom of the flange. That's gonna tell us the distance of pipe that we need to cut off on the inside there. So it's about three inches. I'm not always gonna cut off exactly three inches. I'm gonna cut off a little less than that, and then I'll work it down to the correct height. Uh, as you can see in one of the last videos, we self-leveled this shower pan. That's kind of a, a really good thing to do because when you self-level all this, then you know that your pan is going to sit level and the pre-slope on it will be perfect. So take this off. Got three minutes. Now, a couple of tools you're going to need. This is a pan ice, about a four and five eighths inch hole saw bit. This works perfect for cutting out the hole that you need this to sit in. This distance in here is about four and five eighths between here and here. So that whole bit cuts out this perfect size. Another thing this works well on is a valve hole. Uh, when you put your seal in, this valve, this cutout is the same size as your valve seal. So it's nice to have this in the, in the toolbox. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get this centered in. We're gonna cut this out. Now it's So one of the essential tools I wanted to needed to mention was this guy. It's an inside pipe cutter. Um, get it on Amazon. This is a necessary tool. Got to have this. This cuts the inside of the of the pipe. So what you're going to do is you're going to just kind of cut it down incrementally until you get to the, the depth you need. So I'm going to cut off. I'm going to cut off just enough that we can continue cutting this plywood. <laughs> Alright, so you see how we got some wiggle room in there? Just enough for, for thin set. Alright, so next step is cutting out our pan to fit. So what I'm going to do is I leave the ring in, leave the spacer in, and I just take measurements straight off, get it each end. Right here we got about 10 inches. Now I like to leave a little room in there because if you cut it super tight, it's kind of hard to get in and get out. And if you leave a little bitty gap there, that's no big deal. You gotta put thin set all the way around it anyway, so it's no big deal to leave a little bit of a gap. Okay, so we got Nine and seven eighths that way, nine and seven eighths this way, and about 24 on each end. So this is pretty close to center. Now I'm gonna show you how to transfer this onto the pan and then cut the pan. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take measurements from the inside of the ring to where I'm going to mark it. All right, so what we're doing is we've marked out our pan from the from the ring out to our marks. We're going to make a nice straight line. Then we're just going to cut that with a multi-tool, or you can actually cut it with a razor. You can cut it with anything. This is foam, so it'll cut super easy. some scrap pieces of foam out there we're going to cut us just a little bitty piece and fill that in all right so we're cutting our little 
cutting our little end piece here. And one thing that's kind of important, you want to center it. You want to center it first and then make your measurement of the halfway point out of that. So we had 32 and a half. That's what, 16 and a quarter? So 16 and a quarter each way. So we'll cut off a little piece off of this end and a little piece off of that end. All right, so we're ready to mix some thin set. All right, so the next step is to clean your pan very well. You want to sweep it up, if any dust, debris, vacuum up anything. Then we're going to take a wet sponge and we're going to wipe down everything with a wet sponge. So I want to talk about how you put your flange in. This is how you install the flange. So you got the We've got our ring here, we've got the flange, we've got an ABS glue, thin set. You can mix it kind of soupy, it's okay. So we're going to first we're going to thin set this down, then we're going to add thin set on top of this, then we're going to install this over the top of that. Another important point to mention, you can do the pan, you can do the, the pan first, or you can do this part first. Doesn't really matter. The only thing that does matter is that when you do either or, that you try to make sure that the transition between here and that pan is pretty flush. Uh, it just helps you when you go to install your tile if you make sure that that transition there is nice and smooth. I got that on there good. Now we're gonna add our ABS glue. You're gonna throw some ABS glue on the inside here. Then you're gonna throw some ABS glue on the outside down here. Just kind of make sure you get a good connection. Over the top. We're gonna give it a nice twisting action, quarter turn. Now see how the, the spacer kind of slid out? We can just slide that back under. Now what I do like to do is I like to add a little glue on the inside right in there just to make sure we got a good connection with the existing plumbing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of glue just on the inside where those two pipes meet. That's how you install the uh, flange. All right, so now we're gonna spread thin set all over the shower pan and up the wall a little bit so that anywhere that the shower tray comes in contact with the pan that there's thin set. Uh, any areas where white, any areas where there's white needs to have thin set. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert our pan. We've got everything. Yep, so what he's doing now is adding in a little piece. Gotta put just a little thin set on that. There we go. Slide that little pin. That's what I like to call the Sluter Shuffle. Basically, you just ping one foot around. Everywhere you'll feel the little bubbles popping under your feet. All right, so what I want to talk about is this transition between the flange area and the pan. So you first want to make sure that you got none of that foam ring going up under the edge of your pan. Sometimes, sometimes you can accidentally get pieces of that pan, pieces of the, or you cut it stuck under. The pan. And you're gonna kind of check this like like that. It gives you a good idea to feel where it's high. Around here in our banding, you want to use your uh, your curdy trough. Oh, 
And once you put this ring on here, if you, if you smash it in with your hand, like, like so, you can see a lot of those creases collapse. Rub it in with your hand. And that also helps you feel the transition between flange and pan. I like to use a lot of pin set and just saturate this membrane with thin set. It makes it super rigid once it dries. There we go. And your flange is successfully installed. Alright, so what I want to do is I want to briefly go over how to install these corners. Uh, we're going to install an inside corner and then we'll also install an outside corner. Alright, the inside corners, pretty straightforward. Two of these guys, press one into the corner, screw with the other. I like to do it twice so that it coats it with thin set like that. I like to coat all my membrane with thin set. That is the successfully installed inside corner. All right, so we got the inside corner in. Now we're gonna throw the outside corner over the top of that. Now the outside corner is going to go like that, so I need to cut off a little bit of it at the bottom. Uh, one thing to, to note, I like to cut a little V, a little V in the corner there. That'll help. You'll see when I start to put that in how that V kind of helps that overlap. And that is how an inside and outside corner should overlap at the curve. So next, what we'll do is we'll put in a banding strip there, and we'll repeat at every corner. Band every seam. All right.